Hello, my name is Łukasz Mazurek and I would like to present you the paper Adver, Formal Verification of Randomized Ethereum Smart Contracts. What is Adver? It's a formal verifier of Ethereum smart contracts that verifies randomized contracts. It has a dedicated syntax for contract scenario and properties. And the formal verification is done in the Prism model checker. Now let me briefly talk about each of these bullet points. So, what are randomized smart contracts and how they are different from other contracts uh, in the context of verification? Consider a simple lottery in which two players uh, bet one dollar each and we toss a coin and depending on the result the winner gets two dollars. Of course we can implement this lottery as a simple Ethereum smart contract and in uh, this case players pay one, let's say one Ether to the contract and the contract automatically computes the winner and pays the reward to the winner. How can we define the security of such contract? So we can define the security from the point of view of honest allies uh, in such a way. So this contract is considered secure if the probability of winning against honest Bob is equal to one half. But also we want that probability of winning against malicious Bob is greater or equal one half. Now let me talk about scenarios and properties. Consider this simple bank contract. This contract consists of two functions, deposit and withdraw. The first function just increases the balance of the contract by the value of the function call. And the second function has one argument, uh, the amount. And as long as there's enough balance uh, in the contract, it pays out the amount to the function caller. Is this a secure contract? Well, it depends. If we compare it to the traditional definition of a bank, probably not, because we expect from the bank that only the owner of the money can withdraw it. But we can define the bank differently, that anyone can withdraw any money in, in, with this different definition. It's correct bank contract. So in order to properly define the security of a contract, we need to define uh, something that we call scenario and properties. So in this case, we can define the following scenario. So first, Alice deposits one Ether, then Alice withdraws one Ether, and uh, the property that we want to verify is that in the end, Alice gets back her one Ether. Is this statement correct or not? Of course not, because uh, as I said, anyone can withdraw money, so we can provide the following counterexample for this property. So first Alice deposits one Ether, then Bob withdraws one Ether, and it, it, at that stage Alice no longer can withdraw the money. Now let me talk about Prism. So what is Prism? Prism is a probabilistic model checker a tool for formal modeling and analysis of systems that exhibit random or probabilistic behavior. It supports several model types, namely discrete time Markov trains, continuous time Markov trains, Markov decision processes, probabilistic automata and probabilistic timed automata. In our work we decided to use Markov decision processes because it best suits smart contracts because, because it supports non-determinism. Uh, on this slide we can see the example usage of Prism. So on the left hand side we have the automaton for the Knut and Yao algorithm from 70s. This algorithm uh, models fair dice using fair coins. So on the right hand side we can see the Prism code for this. So we can see that in this model we have two variables s and d and several commands and each command corresponds to one transition in the graph. So having this model implemented in Prism we can define a property to verify. So we can for example define the following property. 
and we can read it as what is the probability that finally s will be 7 and d will be 4. In case of this algorithm, s is 7 at the end of the algorithm and d is the outcome of the algorithm. So we basically ask Prism what is the probability that the outcome of the algorithm will be 4? And the response is that's 1 sixth. Now we are ready to talk about adver. So when we think about formal verification of smart contracts we usually think of a black box that takes a smart contract as an input and outputs if it's secure or not secure. So as I said, uh, usually we want to verify not only the contract but also the scenario. So Adver takes as an input both smart contract and the scenario. And uh, as output it, produce, it produces the prism model. So now we define the properties and we can use this model and properties in Prism to verify the properties and Prism will respond if the properties are true or false, so if the contract is secure or not secure. Additionally, if it's not secure, Prism provides us a counterexample, so basically the interleaving which leads to the false property. So the input to Adver, this smart contract and scenario part, we store it in the ETV file, which is uh, our dedicated syntax for it. So we can see now the example ETV file. So on the left hand side you can see the contract part and on the right hand side you can see the scenario part. So if you take a look at the contract part, you can see that the syntax is very similar to Solidity with some minor differences. The main difference is the bounded integer type. So basically we introduce the bounded in integers to limit the size of the variables. Uh, we did it because the size of the model depends on the number of valuations of variables. So we want to, we want to limit the size of these variables if we don't need to use larger values in order to have uh, as small model as possible. If we take a look on the right hand side part, we can see that these, these lines are similar to Web3 JavaScript library, which is used to execute the Ethereum contract. And also we introduce some extra commands like wait, which basically tells the user to wait with wait in the scenario until some condition is met. Having said that, uh, we see that the input to Adver is not exactly the Ethereum code, it's not the Solidity code, it's slightly different. So what we actually did, we created a second compiler. So actually Adver is, consists of two compilers. The first compiler outputs the Prism model and the second compiler outputs the Solidity file and the Web3 file. However, this, this compiler is straightforward and uh, like, of course, it, it, it was the easy part of the project. The main contribution here is this, this uh, first compiler which creates the, the Prism model. However, we wanted to add also the second, uh, second compiler because now, now we can just simply, simply upload the, the contract to, to the Ethereum uh, network. As a bonus, we implemented also some, uh, some abstract functions uh, in our ETV language for cryptograph cryptographic functions like signatures and uh, commitments. So for example, we have a function for signing and for verification of signatures. Of course, Ethereum supports uh, signatures. So for example, in Web3, there is a function to sign. In Solidity, there is a function to recover the signature. However, you can see th this is the, the, the actual code to just sign and verify three numbers. So you can see that the API is quite complicated. So, so to properly pass the arguments to these functions, you need to take care about like 
padding, like uh, encoding of the numbers. So, uh, in order to prevent user from writing this by hand, we also provide the feature that the user can just uh, just type the sign function in ETV, and Adver will produce all this code for 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 him. And also, of course, Adver produces the Prism model, which is not not listed on this slide. Okay, we of course need to model the adversary, so we decided to not limit the power of the ad adversary. So our adversary basically can execute any contract function with any arguments, with any value, at any time. What does it mean? So assume we have a contract with two functions, input and finalize. So the um, example scenario of use, usage of this contract, the honest scenario, can look as follows. That it's just a sequence of calls to the contract functions and uh, commands like wait, yes? So, uh, on the other hand, the adversary, it's like the automaton with only one state and from this state he can do anything. So he can execute the input function with argument zero, he can execute the input function with argument one and he can execute uh, finalize function and all the other functions with all possible arguments and values and so on and so on. As a case study, we used Adver to verify two smart contracts known from the literature. So the first example is the rock, paper, scissors contract from step by step towards creating a safe smart contract, lessons and insights from a cryptocurrency lab by Del Monlino and et al. So this is the actual contract code that was written by the students and the authors use this code to show several typical bugs that can be made uh, during creating such contracts. So the contract consists of two functions. The first function, player input, uh, it has one argument choice, which is 0, 1 or 2, and this function first checks if number of players is not is less than two and if the value of the call is correct and if that's correct it increases the reward variable it stores the address and the choice of the player and uh, it increases the num players uh, variable and the second function finalize it basically checks the choices of the players and according to the choices, it computes the winner. So, uh, depending on the result, it transfers the, the, the reward either to one player or to another one. Uh, or if it's a draw, it transfer it transfer half of the reward to both. So the authors of this uh, paper uh, pointed out several flaws of the of the implementation. So for, for first bug was that Bob can finalize the protocol before Alice's move. Then another flaw was that Bob may never make his move. And it also prevents Alice from winning. The next one was that Bob can enter the game twice and hence disallow Alice to join. And the last uh, interesting bug is that Alice's choice is publicly visible in the network. So, Bob can take advantage of this knowledge and make his choice such that he always wins. Okay, so we wanted to verify this protocol uh, in adverse, so, so we needed to define the properties to verify. So, we define, uh, we define the following properties. The first property is that Honest Alice wins with probability at least one third, and the second property is that Honest Alice wins or draws with probability at least two thirds. So we implemented this uh, contract in ETV, we compiled it with uh, Adver and we verified the properties in Prism and the output was that both properties are false. And moreover, Prism provided us the counterexample. So this counterexample is basically the interleaving of the of the execution of contract functions. So 
basically we can see the order in which the contract functions were called. So looking at this, this uh, counterexample, we could see that this is exactly the, the first bug, yes, that Bob can finalize the protocol before Alice is moved. So having this knowledge, we fix the contract and rerun the verification, yes. So after rerunning, uh, we found that the property still evalu evaluate to false and, Pris and Prism provided us other counterexamples. So iteratively, we were able to find and fix all these flaws in the protocol. So Adver iteratively help us to find and fix all the bugs by evaluating the properties to false and showing the counterexamples. Okay, so now I want to talk about the uh, second example. So uh, we use Edward to verify the MicroPay1 protocol. So it's a protocol from uh, micropayments for decentralized currencies paper by Rafael Paz and Abishalat. And this paper was published on the, the ACM CCS conference. So in this uh, protocol, the user makes a lot of small payments to the same merchant. Uh, M. And since small payments are expensive, he wants to m make one large payment instead of a lot of small payments. So let's say each small payment uh, is uh, of value X. So at the beginning of the protocol, the user creates a contract and deposits 100 X on the contract. Then at each small payment, the merchant it chooses the R1 value at random and then computes some other values as well, sends some values to user. Then the user chooses another random value, R2, and sends it to, to merchant. And then if the values are equal, then the merchant can withdraw the money, can withdraw the 100x. Yes, so we can see that expected revenue of merchant is x because the the reward is 100x but the probability that he can withdraw it is 1 over 100. So it turned out that this protocol is buggy so it's vulnerable to so-called uh, front-running attack so basically in this attack user can simulate the merchant part of the protocol so he can create all the numbers by himself and he can withdraw the money from the contract instead of merchant. So what's the story behind this protocol? So it was initially published uh, at the ACM CCS uh, conference and that version of the protocol was vulnerable to this attack. Then we discovered the bug and independently Joseph Bonneau also discovered this and we contacted the authors and the authors published the fixed version of the protocol on, on ePrint. But we wanted to check if we can verify the original version of the protocol in Adver. So once again, we implemented this in uh, Adver. And once again, Adver was able to find the bug and show the counterexample, which helped to fix the, the protocol. So this is the second example of the uh, smart contract that we verified with Adver. Summary. So what's our contribution? We designed the ETV language for randomized protocols built on top of smart contracts. We implemented Adver, which is a compiler from ETV to MDP and to Solidity. And this implementation is publicly available on GitHub. We formally defined the syntax and semantics of ETV and also we defined the translation from ETV to MDP and we proved that the translation preserved the semantics of the language. What are the limitations of our solution? So unfortunately the size of the model and hence the verification time grows exponentially with the number of parameters of the contract. Because of that this method is practical only for two-party protocols with low number of parameters. However, the formal translation works also for multi-party protocols of any size. 
Anyway, we were able to verify two contracts from the literature with Adver. That's it. Thank you for your attention.